Hi there, my name is Inshira Premium and welcome to the Business Lecturer in Wudin Show and welcome to my series on Business Finance and this is the part 5 or the 5th session in the series of Business Finance where I'm covering one of the key topics in uh, financial management and advanced financial management. So if you have not watched the previous videos, 1, 2, 3, 4, make sure you head on to my Facebook page, you can watch them there, or my Instagram page if you are an Insta fan. Make sure you watch it there on the IGTV or you can head on to my YouTube channel and also watch it there as well. Make sure you also subscribe to or, and follow me on all of these platforms so that when I release videos like this, you can get access to them and help you to write your exams and pass well. So now we've spoken about retained earnings. We've also spoken about debt finance. Now let's come to the real deal, equity Finance. So when it comes to the equity, the issue about equity, this is where we want shareholders. This is where we want owners of the company. This is where we want people to come and buy shares in the company. So when it comes to equity, we're going to look at it from various angles. Now, when we talk about equity, one of the things that we need to also talk about is, in as much as we are looking at the equity finance, we are also looking at what? The cost of equity. And we'll be getting into this in a moment. Now, for equity financing, there are two things you need to understand. One, a company that is already quoted or listed on the stock exchange market, when they want to raise finance, then there are four methods that they can use. And so we're going to go through these four methods. The first one is called public issue or offer for subscription. With public issue of, or offer for subscription, this is where the company issues uh, it shares to the general public for them to subscribe for the shares of the company like what MTN did in their initial IPO so it is called public issue once you are listed on the stock exchange market you do a public issue inviting the public to subscribe to the shares of the company that is a source of finance to the company another method that we can use in what we call um, public offer for sale by tender with public offer for sale by tender, what you need to understand is that with a public issue, the price is fixed. So like the MTN shares, it was 0.75 uh, Ghana cities per share, right? So with that one, what happened is that it's a public issue, the price was fixed. But with a public offer for sale by tender, this is where the price of the shares are not fixed or it's not fixed, but then the uh, shares are allocated to the highest bidder. Okay, so with this one, venture capitalist firms will come, but they will do their calculation and then they will pay, okay, we will pay $1.5 per share, we will pay $2.5 per share. So what happens is that the company will issue the shares to the uh, company that will, or the people that will be able to what, give the highest uh, bid for the shares of the company. Then the third thing is what we refer to as placing. Placing. So we have public issue for subscription, we have um, public offer for sale by tender, then we have placing. Now with placing, a sponsor, usually a merchant's bank, arranges for its clients to buy the shares. However, at least about 25% shares of the shares are, is made available to the public for what? Subscription. So with placing, this is what happens. We are issuing shares, but then we just invite a bank, a bank so that they will arrange with their clients so their clients will buy the shares directly in our company. But then when we are doing that, about 25% of the shares would have to be made available for the general public in order for them to subscribe. That is also another method. Then a fourth way of raising finance uh, uh, when we are listed on the stock market is at right issues. Now, right issues is simply the issue of shares to existing shareholders. So with this one, we are going to the public, but we are going to the existing shareholders. Now, the idea of our right issue, which we'll be spending uh, a couple of time in a moment on, is that when there is a right issue, the number of shares of the company increases, but the market value of the shares of the company fall. I'm going to explain that in a moment because the market value falling is called theoretical market value. Because when you do right issue, the shares are issued to existing shareholders, shares are issued to existing shareholders at a price lower than the current market value. What does that mean? It means if the current market value of the share of the company is $12 per share, 
When we undertake a right issue, we can issue it to the shareholders at, say, uh, $8 per share. It has to be below the current market value of the shares. So it is like there is a bonus inside there. At the same time, there is also a full uh, market price. If you have watched my videos on earnings per share, you realize that one of the things that brings about earnings per share is right issue, and I explained the, this concept also there in relation to that. So for listed companies, these are the four methods available for us to raise finance. Now, what if the company is not listed? If the company is not listed, it has two options. One, it can remain unlisted and find out how it can raise finance through private placing. Okay? Or can become quoted and then use any of the four methods that we have spoken about. So that is what you have to understand in relation to equity finance. Now, there are other things that we need to understand about equity finance. We have what we call bonus issue. We have what we call strip dividend, and we'll be getting into that also in a moment. So let's look at right issue and how it affects the capital structure of the company. Remember I told you that with right issues, new shares are issued to existing shareholders at a price lower than, they are, than the current market value of the shares. Now we said that when that happens, there is going to be, the examiner may require that you calculate what we call the theoretical X price of the shares. That is the new market value of the shares. So let's look at that in here, and I have a question here which I'm going to read out to you. The current share price of the company is $5 per share. The company makes a right issue of one for four. Right, so one for four, what does that mean? It means that we give you one new share for four shares already uh, outstanding shares. So what does that mean? It means that we give you one new share for four shares that you are holding in currently in the company. And uh, at three dollars. So you can see that the current share price is five, but the right issue is done at three. The requirement, what is the theoretical X right value per share? And then B, what is the value of a right? So let's see how we calculate that. In the calculation of that, we put the shares like this, then we put a value here. Then we bring the current scenario, what is happening currently. So currently, if you hold four shares, they are quoted at $5 per share from the question, and that's going to be $20. Then under the right issue policy, we are giving you one new share at $3. So that's going to be three. So we're going to have five here, we're going to have $23 here. Sounds good. Then the I requirement, which is the theoretical X right value per share, is the same as the new market value. Okay? So that's what I was telling you. It is theoretical because it's just in our book. So theoretical X price, X right value per share, it's going to be 23 divided by 5. 23 divided by 5, and 23 divided by 5 is $4.6, dollars $4 So do you see what I told you? I told you that when there is a right issue, the market value of the company falls, the theoretical market value. So now, in theory, we say that our market value is what, 4.6, which is below the current market value of 5. Then the next thing is value of a right. Now, how do we get the value of a right? The value of a right is simply the new market value minus the uh, right price. The new market value minus the right price. So the new market value is 4. So value of a right is the new market value 4.6 minus value of a right $3. And that's going to be $1.6. So that is what you have to understand when we talk about earnings per share, right? Not too, not too mystical, right? Very, very easy for you to do. So 
that is what you have to understand about the right issue. In the next video, we will talk about the calculating the cost of equity. So if there are any questions you have, please put it in the comment box. And then do me a favor, like this video, share this video, and invite other people to also join me on this broadcast as we help students across the country to be able to pass their examination. So check out the playlist on my, on my Facebook page. Check out also on my YouTube or my Instagram TV. Wherever you want to be at, I have content for you to help you pass the exam. So I'll see you in the next video.